Welcome to a special edition of a Trexone Conversation. Dr. Brad Tucker is standing by uh, in his lab. He's an astrophysicist and Trexone's science guru. We're talking the Opportunity Mars rover today. And now, Brad, I was going to ask you who programmed Opportunity to say my battery is low and it's getting dark, but... I did a bit of research. It turns out that it might have originated with a science reporter tweeting that out and it becoming a viral sensation. Nevertheless, who was that evil genius that programmed the uh, rover? Yeah. It was kind of a bit of a letdown for a kind of a premature ending that was actually 15 years over time, right? You know, uh, Opportunity was built for a 90-day mission and got up to about 15 years. So, you know, j- j- saying low on battery, it's, it is kind of sad to think that it went the same way your iPhone does when you haven't charged it in a while. Um, but, you know, alas, that's technology. Well, Opportunity, as you, as you alluded to there, it's been on the Red Planet for 15 years. It was only designed to last for 90 days. Where did it find these other 14 years? <laughs> it was one of those things that was kind of just efficiently made. You know, it, it, because it was purely solar panel driven, there was a bit of uncertainty about how well the solar panels would keep up, the batteries, um, you know, dust and that sort of thing, which is actually what ultimately led to it dying. But, you know, it was just efficiency and well designed. And you always want to make sure you get a minimum scientific usefulness out of it. And then we've been seeing a lot of this with NASA probes, uh, New Horizons, as we talked about last month, that went an extra two and a half years now already. So it's uh, it's been great. The, um, the, the bang for buck, so to speak, that NASA has been getting out of their uh, solar system op probes. What has Opportunity taught us about the Red Planet? Look, it, Opportunity really changed our belief in how uh, what Mars was. We, we knew that rovers could land. Uh, we knew that it would work. And then Opportunity and Spirit came along and really sh- showed that uh, the, the, the composition was was drastically different than what we thought, that there really was evidence of water, water flows, that the the sand and the dust was, was quite rich. It wasn't just this dusty composition. There was metals. There was things in it. Um, and that it really could have been habitable through and a half, four billion years ago. It really turned that tide and said, it's not just a thought. This pretty much looks like Mars was habitable billions of years ago. And it means then it is not silly for life uh, on Mars. And it directly, I think, led to the next rover, Mars 2020, or now called the Rosalind Franklin rover, um, being built in, to land on Mars to search for life because of what it did. It's absolutely incredible to think that that these things can last, but I guess that, as you say, that's they're sort of designed to last. So it's not, it's not a great surprise that it lasted uh, a, a beyond its mission time. Although is fifteen years, you know, like really pushing the stretch goal. <laughs> uh, look, I think you know, it's, it's. I think the other thing is right. We've seen other Mars probes and rovers fail, right? You know, it is hard yeah. to do. So it's kind of one of the things that even if they've landed, sometimes they haven't fully worked. All this, but the Rosetta and Philly uh, probe that landed on the comet, the, the lander didn't quite work. It's if you don't really know where you're landing, what kind of rock you're landing on. You know, imagine being in an airplane and the pilot having to land at an airport. He doesn't know where it is and whether there's even a runway. That's what we do to these probes all the time. And so it kind of was nice that it did work out the way it did. Um, I, I think at some point it would have died. Everyone was realizing that at some point this thing's going to come to an end. But it, I think it was just a bit sad because it was almost like, well, it's always there. and It's always chirping and pinging along. And in Curiosity, the, the newer rover had similar problems. That dust storm last year covered everything up and it took NASA a bit of time to contact Curiosity. Uh, eventually it did, luckily, and it was able to clear its, the dust and its panels off enough to, to recharge. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for Opry. And I think the other thing is, if it's been 15 years on the planet, it was built about 20 years ago, right? You know, so it's, it's really 20-year-old at least solar panels that have been having heavy radiation and everything like that. So that's, I, you know, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> it did all right then. Exactly. How does NASA and JPL and, and all those agencies, um, you know, the ESA, how do they budget for these these type of mission, over the, you know, the good mission overruns? Do, uh, yeah. you know, are people just there? Yes, yeah, so what ultimately happens is kind of depending on the science stream, because I worked heavily in the Kepler mission, every two years you ask for a mission extension. 
um, and you justify it because really at that time it's operational costs some people some data some time on the deep space networks to get your data back and that sort of thing so relatively inexpensive given how expensive these things were and so if you can show what the science you're going to do and I think that's what maybe people have clued into every time every couple of years opportunity or spirit when it was there or curiosity now made a destination to a different landscape you know they said all right we're here we've done the experiments now let's go over there because we haven't looked at that type of rock or that type of material you try and do something new every years instead of just always getting the same stuff fantastic well brad uh, looking forward to the next mission there, there is one on the way i, I think you said yeah, that's right. So the, there should be some other rovers land, uh, launching in 2020, and these really will be equipped for um, the tools to measure biology, life forms, and it really could turn the tide to saying, is there life somewhere else or is there life on Mars? David Bowie sang about that, didn't he? He did, that's right. I, he, I think he would have predicted it long ago. <laughs> Fantastic, Brad. Thanks, as always, for checking in and talking science. Anytime. Anytime. 